Okay, Rihanna. This morning, what we're going to talk about is how to maintain somebody's airway. Okay. Okay. And we'll talk about the the use of section, and um, you'll use it. We'll talk about uh, measuring for an airway, and you'll put one in. And we'll talk about um, other forms of airways that we may need to use, which is called a, a nasal pharyngeal airway, because sometimes you may okay. not be able to get access to somebody's mouth and put an airway in, so we may have to go by the nose. Okay. Okay. So one thing is. Um, you know, when we don't get a response from some people, we have to ensure that they've got an airway because if they haven't got an airway, they're not going to live. OK, so we would um, check a response from the patient. If we don't get a good response and even if it's sometimes a moan or a groan, we have to look to make sure there's nothing in the mouth and listen. Yeah, right. Quite close to the patient to see if I can hear anything gurgling in that mouth. So I have a quick look down the mouth to see if I can see anything in there that could be causing an airway obstruction. So what could be in there? The tongue. Right, yeah, that's the yeah. muscle that gets floppy, basically, yeah. when somebody's not very well and unconscious. Uh, some food. Right, vomit, yeah, good. What else? Uh, blood as well. Yeah. What else can, can become loose and maybe in that mouth? Some teeth. Good, yeah. okay. So, if there's any of that in there, what's the first thing we're going to do? Um, suction. Good, okay. So, generally... If something's in the mouth, we use a big ball sucker called a Yanka sucker. Okay. Okay. And we've got a suction unit. It should already be set up in the wards or in the ED departments, depends on where you're working. Okay. So the idea is we make sure we can hear the suction working and we look in the mouth. Okay. So go. Yeah. yeah. We look in the mouth. Yeah. But we only suction what we can see. Why is that? Because if there's anything in there, right? As further back, if you put the yanka sucker willy nilly in the back of the throat, it'll force whatever's in there further down and you'll stop the airway straight away. You'll occlude it. Oh. Okay? So you only section where you can see. Yeah? So about there, is Yeah, it? yeah, that's fine. As long as you can see, yeah, good. Yeah. So we do that until you try and clear as much as you can. Yeah? So then what can we do? So once you've done that, we'll stop it. Okay? There you are. Keep that close to the patient now because you know we've already used it for them. Okay? So what can we do now? What's the next thing? So you've cleared that airway. What else can lift that tongue off the back of the throat? It can. So we could go for that. But what's that. one simple manoeuvre you could do? Tend not to do that in hospital because no. we've got suction. Yeah? So what lifts that tongue off the throat? Would you go like that then to try and yeah. lift? Could do. Yeah. If he hasn't got a neck injury, right, we do what is called a head tilt chin okay. lift. Yeah? Of course, that lifts the tongue, but sometimes this tongue is still floppy because if this person's unconscious, yeah, yeah, it stays there. So we may have to still keep that tongue in. Then we go for an airway. Okay. Okay. Do you know what these are called? I don't know what they're called. They're called Goodell airways. Okay. Okay. And they are a means of, as I said, getting air into them by keeping that tongue in the position. So different sizes. How do you measure to see which right. ones? Good girl. Because again, this chap's quite big, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So where do you think we could measure? Do you measure down the side for that? Yeah, good. Angle of his jaw. Yeah. Okay. So there, to the corner of his mouth. That's a bit short. Okay, so... So would it go from the side up to... Yeah, the so from there, look. Right to the corner of his mouth. Okay. So that's the right size. How do you put that in then, do you know? Is it that way? Yeah, good girl, it is. And then, then turn. Can... Good. Excellent. Yeah. So that then. And again, if that person... If this person's starting to come around for consciousness, he may start gagging, okay. yeah, and coughing and trying to get rid of that, so we pull it straight back out. Right, Because okay. the, the problem is we could cause him to vomit, yeah. okay? But if he accepts it, we can leave it there, and then maybe put some oxygen on, yeah, to maintain his oxygen saturation, but that's a one main way of maintaining his airway. Okay. However, if we've got a problem, yeah, with the mouth, particularly with the structure of mouth, particularly if they've had trauma to the mouth, we've got another option of going that way. Okay. Down and, through the nose. And it'd be the right nostril, is that? Yeah, generally, only because they say it's easier access through the right nostril. Slightly a little bit bigger. So, the, if you read the books, that's what they tell you. Yeah, slightly a bit bigger. So, what we've got then is these. Do you know what these are called? I don't. Right, these are called nasal pharyngeal airways. So, these are called oral pharyngeal airways or Goodell's. These are called nasal pharyngeal airways. Okay, again, different sizes. Same okay. as these. So, how do we measure that, do you think? Would that be from the nostril? Yeah, the good. Then? Yeah. So from the angle of the jaw, to the nostril. Okay. Yeah, so that one will fit. And also, we've got to look at the um, aperture or the diameter, okay, 
and we measure that up around the size of the the nary as we call it or the nostril okay so that will fit because if you look at that one yeah that's way too big yeah okay so we use some lubrication yeah what we're going to do or you're going to do is so the beveled end goes to the septum of the nose okay yeah so that's the bone in the nose so you're going to Put that to the septum of the nose. You're going to put it in and you're going to slightly wiggle it. Okay. And push it down. Well enough. Okay. Does that keep going? Until that beveled end sits right on his nostril. You will get a bit of resistance, that's it. Go, go. Yeah. Feel you up. Yeah. Sense. Good. Okay. So that's a me another means of maintaining an airway. Okay. Yeah. Um, is via the nose and again then sometimes we'll put oxygen on the top sometimes not depends on where the oxygen saturations are being maintained um, but again there's some debate over when this is used or not yeah particularly if somebody's got a significant head injury and we're not sure what's happened to the, the base of the skull we won't put that in because that will go through straight into the skull okay or straight into the brain more often um, so we maintain that that way